What's up everyone? I'm the Burning Baron, but you can just call me the Baron. And just out of what I thought was Mario Kart Burnout, the franchise just came right back and uh, the hype is right back there. Now, there isn't necessarily a reason why my Mario Kart interest has once again risen, despite the fact that I just finished posting a four hour video of every track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but the idea of a new Mario Kart is definitely swirling amongst many people at this point, alongside the potential rumors of another console. And as we all know, a new console is bound to mean a new Mario Kart. Of course, neither of them have been confirmed yet, but let's be real, it's only a matter of time. It won't be long after a new console is revealed before a new Mario Kart is revealed, and Nintendo can start printing money like they know how to do. So, what does that mean for this video? Well, titles right below this screen, my friends. I think y'all can get the idea. It's time that I throw my ideas into the ring for the next Mario Kart. Like I said, it hasn't even been confirmed yet, but is that really going to stop me or anybody else? No, because it already hasn't. So, I think there are a few things I do want to mention. One, this is a completely unscripted video. Unlike the last few times where I've given my thoughts on what I want, this has no script to it. I am doing this completely blind and free, free speech. So if you hear me stutter, that's because I'm trying to find out how to keep talking without my brain, without outrunning my brain, like I just did. So yeah, uh, I think the first thing I need to do is get into some rules. So let's hop right into that. Okay, so there are a few things I want to talk about before I just go right into the meat of this video. Don't worry, the meat of this video is not going to be terribly long. I think I've got a good handle on how I want to do this. But first off, the rules and restrictions. So I think I want to get a little bit more ambitious for this. Most Mario Kart games beforehand have limited it to 16 new tracks and 16 retro tracks. But, given the fact that Mario Kart Tour has, like, 21 new tracks at best, and Mario Kart 8 having its DLC, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe having, like, double the number of Mario Kart 8, I think it's fair to say that we should be moving up from this 16 to 16 ratio. I think that the next Mario Kart game should increase its base number of tracks to equal up to the base game of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which would effectively equal out to Mario Kart 8's base game plus its DLC. To just be blunt and simple, that would mean 48 tracks total. So, 60, um, let's see, 24 new tracks and 24 returning tracks. I think we're at that point where Mario Kart is big enough in recent times where we can't, I don't feel like they can afford to go back to the bare minimum 16 to 16 to even out the 32 tracks in a game. And if they did do that, well that's just gonna result in DLC down the line and congrats, you paid 80 bucks for this Mario Kart game, shell out 20 more for the DLC later down the line and that just doesn't sound nearly as ideal to me anymore. So let's up the number of base tracks, why not? Uh, let's get down to what tracks will qualify. So, as we know at this point, many tracks have started making a second to fourth reappearance in the Mario Kart franchise. Starting with Mario Kart 8, well, Mario Kart 8's DLC, some tracks have started appearing a third time. Those being Baby Park, Yoshi Circuit, and SNES Rainbow Road. So, and by the time of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, with its booster course pass and Mario Kart Tour, some tracks have even reached up to four appearances. Two of which have even hit five. Six if you want to get even more technical. But we're not here to get technical, we're here to create some limitations on what's going to appear in this video. And I think the easiest thing I can say is that if a track has had five appearances at this point, we really should not be qualifying it for a new game. So, let's just be real. 
Mario Kart tracks that have appeared four or more times are not going to be in the running at all. This means tracks like SNES Mario Circuit 3, SNES Rainbow Road, N64 Choco Mountain, Wii Coconut Mall, heck, even tracks like 3DS Bowser, Neo Bowser City or 3DS Piranha Plant Slide, Baby Park, we're not including those. Those aren't going to be in the running because, you know, some of us don't want to see the same track appear in every single game. I don't care how popular they are amongst the fan base. We need to give those other tracks a chance to shine and a chance to revive themselves. Give them a second chance. Because some of them haven't even gotten their first. So, what's going to qualify for this list? This, I've already got it all sorted out. The only things I'm going to be ta including are tracks that have either not had a reappearance at all, or tracks that have only appeared once before. They can be tracks that appeared in Tour, or they can be a tracks that have appeared in Mario Kart DS, Wii, but we're not, I I'm actually going to avoid talking about tracks that have already appeared in Mario Kart 7 and Mario Kart 8. Most of Mario Kart 8's tracks, or Mario Kart 7's retro tracks, in fact, every single retro track in Mario Kart 7 reappeared in Mario Kart Tour, and then some of those appeared in the Booster Course Pass. So, if we're going to be bringing back tracks that have only appeared once, they're going to be tracks that first appeared, or made their first reappearance in DS or Wii. Anything from Mario Kart 7's retro lineup or Mario Kart 8's retro lineup are completely out of the running as well as most everything in the Booster Course Pass. I say most because we're still gonna try and get every system repped here, and that means we have to include Tour, which I don't have a problem with in the slightest. And to be fair, every single Tour track technically has only reappeared once, despite most of them appearing alongside their first appearances, so whatever. Those are the rules. Only tracks that have appeared once or haven't reappeared at all qualify. So. Let's dive right in. Alright, so since we'll be increasing the cup count from 4 to 6, I think it's worth addressing that we need to add two new cups to this. Uh, I think the... Well, I decided to try to follow the retro lineup's habit of naming their cups after items to a degree. We all know the Leaf Cup was not an item when it debuted, but it became an item in Mario Kart 7, so it gets the pass. And I decided to take the Feather and Boomerang Cups from the Booster Course Pass and add them to the retro lineup since they are both named after items. Well, the Feather is an obscure item, but it's still an item regardless. So let's start with the Shell Cup. I will be giving the tracks I want and maybe a little bit of a rough overview on how they can maybe change it or update it or add some new features to it. Uh, we're also going to be rolling with the idea that hand gliding, underwater, and anti-gravity would all be coming back. I know out of all three of those, anti-gravity might be the one that is iffy on returning, but if they want to have uh, Wii U tracks return, they kind of need to do that. So we start with the Shell Cup, and my picks for Shell Cup are going to be DS Figure 8 Circuit, N64 Moo Moo Farm, SNES, Koopa Beach 1, and Wii U Sweet Sweet Canyon. Uh, I wanted to initially have Wii's Luigi Circuit as an opener for Shell Cup to kind of revive Luigi's circuits, but I had better Wii picks down the line that I kind of rather picked. So I decided to go with DS Figure 8 Circuit instead because it still fits that simple opener circuit with some pretty good music to boot. Uh, I think not much can really change in terms of its layout or even some additional features, but I feel like if we want to do anything, let's just add a little bit more in terms of detail. Being a DS track, the original incarnation didn't have too much to look at, but I think what if I want to do anything, I really want to pronounce or make more use of the colored block structures in the background, like the ones that were in Super Mario Bros. 3. If we were maybe add some more Super Mario Bros. 3 elements as a whole, some more noticeable block structures, some definitely some more stands with an audience, maybe make a more foresty area for the second half of the course, much like they did with Mario Circuit, DS Mario Circuit in the Booster Course Pass and Tour. 
But other than that, I don't really see them doing too much with figure eight circuit. Like, I feel like the over, like the um, intersection bit is a little too big to make it into a gliding section where you can fly over it. I think they could do that, but I don't know. I just feel like that might be a little too much of a stretch. It might be best just to keep this one as simple as possible while just maybe update the visuals. Up next is N64 Moo Moo Farm, which hasn't been seen since Mario Kart DS. So I think it's about time we got this one back. Also, I just needed some N64 options and I really didn't have a lot because, well, seven of them reappeared between Mario Kart 7 and 8, and then Frappe Snowland and Choco Mountain were both in tour, and Choco Mountain was in 8 Deluxe as well. So it was really limiting my options on what I could pick for N64 options. And it really just boiled down to uh, Moo Moo Farm, Banshee Boardwalk, and then anything that was in Mario Kart Wii, excluding Mario Raceway. At the base of things, I had like five options. So, Moo Moo Farm it is! Honestly, why not? Moo Moo Meadows is a, it's a fantastic track, and that's the sequel to Moo Moo Farm. Uh, much like before, I don't really think there's too much we can do here. Uh, maybe if we want, maybe like do what they did with Moo Moo Meadows, change the time of day, add some barns, add some more cows, maybe, maybe break down one of the fences and the cows can start wandering onto the track just like in Moo Moo Meadows. Maybe Moo Moo Farm could start e taking inspiration from its sequel track. And well, maybe that would be a little too much considering we just got Moo Moo Meadows, so I don't know if Moo Moo Farm has a strong ch chance, but I personally would love to see it, so let's bring it back. Uh, SNES Koopa Beach 1 is my next pick, and I'm quite surprised that I myself went with this. For starters, this would be our first Star Cup course to lower itself so low, but Koopa Beach 1 isn't really that big, and in the, if we make modern changes, I don't see it being very hard either. And on the topic of modern changes, there were actually quite a few things I thought we could do to this track. I'm just going to get up a quick map so I can go over it. But I think one of the big things being a beach is that, oh, excuse me, the water can be transitioned into an underwater bit. Much like how, excuse me, I got hiccups a bit. Much like how DS Cheap Cheap Beach was handled where most of the beach sections were treated as proper underwater sections. I'm thinking what we could possibly do is maybe sink the like right half of the track into a full underwater area. Transition it to maybe just the deep end of the water. Uh, I was also thinking that we could hang the, a new starting banner over some palm trees, or have it attached to palm trees instead, and heck, maybe even add like a cabana area near the end, where it's like you got some Toad Shy Guys and Yoshis all hanging around this like open hut having some drinks in like this really nice beach resort setting. I think Koopa Beach 1 has potential to be a lot more than what it used to be, which was just a really plain and empty beach. Even Koopa Beach 2 and Mario Kart Tour didn't really seem to do much, so maybe it's time to bring Koopa Beach 1 back and create something completely new out of it. So I think that's what they can do. Sink the right half of the map into a deep end underwater section and create a little bit more of a bustling social area near the start. I think that would be really, really cool. And as for Wii U Sweet Sweet Canyon, well, I don't really, again, we're talking about a game that, as far as we know, doesn't even exist yet, so I don't know what to expect or what to really create as a reasonable addition. So I think Wii U tracks will relatively remain the same because like, they're already in a very high definition system, so at, 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 unless they add some new feature that the Wii U tracks could benefit from, I don't think there's much I can say about most modern tracks. So. Let's move on to my next cup, the Feather Cup. So my Feather Cup ideas start with Wii Totes Factory, 3DS Shy Guy Bazaar, GCN Mushroom Bridge, and Tour Athens Dash. 
So my idea for a feather cup being between shell cup and banana cup is that it targets courses that are a little bit gimmicky or maybe a little trickier for a shell cup, but are also not that hard to be considered banana cup courses. And I feel like Toad's Factory is the perfect way to start. Being another Wii fan favorite that a lot of people are clamoring for, Wii Toad's Factory would act as a perfect intro to a cup that represents the in-between between shell and banana. Toad's Factory is not a very long or a very complicated looking track, but I think what would earn it a little bit of a step up is the number of gimmicks within that factory. You've got the giant panel, um, like, press, hydraulic presser things in the first area that turn the item box, or brick blocks into item boxes, so you got all the conveyor belts, those are a huge thing across the entire track, and even the very end with all the mud and the shifting walls, I feel like this is a very tricky track that I think could be a step up from the Shell Cup. So... As for additions, I mean the best, like, the easiest thing you could do is maybe create a small gliding section at the end of the factory, or replace the ramp with a, with a ramp near the end with a glider. Heck, maybe even place the ramp a little sooner as, as opposed to the end, so that the gliding actually makes a little more sense. Maybe have it active on laps two or three, so that they, you're still forced to go through the mud in the first few laps. Up next is Shy Guy Bazaar, which, much like most of the Wii U tracks, I don't really think much needs to change for these tracks because they, like 3DS Shy Guy Bazaar did just have its tour appearance and I don't think much needs to be changed for it. So we'll just keep it simple and say, keep it the same, update the visuals, that's really all it needs. And next up would be GCN Mushroom Bridge, much like the others, it also reappeared in tour just recently, so I don't think it needs too much in terms of additions, because even in tour it largely stayed the same. As long as we can still drive on the bridge uh, arcs, I think we'll be good, because I don't really think we need to revive that one off to the road path that Double Dash had, because at the end of the day, that was less of a shortcut and more of an easy items at the very beginning. So, plus, we all thought GCN Mushroom Bridge would end up being in the booster course pass. It wasn't, so I think now would be a good time to bring it back again. Why not? I just realized that is a track that has appeared twice, but we'll let it creep because the first time it reappeared was Demas. And finally, ending off the Feather Cup, we have Tour Athens Dash. I feel like out of all the city tracks that were present in Mario Kart Tour and to their transition to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Athens Dash felt like the shortest and most easiest without being too boring. Like, this easily could have been New York Minute or Tokyo Blur, but those two being early game tracks, they just don't hold up very well. And I feel like Tour Athens Dash is just so much more interesting when compared to both of them. So with its short layout and its relatively easy first two laps, I feel like Athens Dash would be a very perfect finisher for the in-between cup between Shell and Banana. Nothing really needs to change again, uh, considering, again, we don't know any sort of new feature that could be added, but who knows, maybe I'll make another video to go over my ideas, plus some new features. But for now, we move on to the Banana Cup, where the picks are Wii U Mario Circuit, SNES Vanilla Lake 1, DS Delfino Square, and Tour Yoshi's Island. Again, rolling with the idea that anti-gravity will return, I think out of all the Mario circuits I would like to see come back, Wii U Mario Circuit is the champ. It is one of my favorite Mario circuits to date, and when compared to most of the others, I just feel like Wii U Mario Circuit's just probably the best option. We already just had DS Mario Circuit, and 64 Mario Raceway has already reappeared in both Tour and in Wii, and okay, I think we're a, a lot of us are sick of Mario Circuits 1 through 3 from SNES. So let's just not talk about those, and that leaves Wii, 3DS, and Wii U. Much like before, I was very tempted to put Wii's Mario Circuit 
but along the line, I just felt like I had better Wii options that I would have rather included. So Toad's Factory ended up winning, and another Wii track down the line just kind of beats out Mario Circuit. So Wii U Mario Circuit it is. It's a nice track, fully makes use, it makes great use of its anti-gravity, so I think it would be a perfect way to open up the Banana Cup with a returning Mario Circuit. Let's keep that going. Up next might be a very disagreeable so situation in the form of SNES Middle Lake 1. You might wonder how a Star Cup course manages to both be a banana and a Shell Cup course, but much like Koopa Beach 1, SNES Vanilla Lake 1 isn't that big and it doesn't seem all that hard. A lot of its obstacles come in the form of the snow blocks, which, I mean, again, especially in Mario Kart Tour, weren't that intrusive. Uh, maybe in Mario Kart Tour they were a little bit more intrusive because you bounce off of them, but if we roll by some different rules in a new Mario Kart, we could probably work around that. Other than that, both the water sections are, well, one of them is really small, but it's placed in the middle, and the other one is relatively big, but it's placed a little bit out of the way. So, along with the ice physics, I feel like this could definitely be a step up from being any lower than the Banana Cup, but I don't think it's long enough to really qualify for the Leaf Cup. It can still be seen as a very tricky track, on the other hand, thanks to its relatively sporadic snow piles and snow blocks, but I think being in the Banana Cup is a little bit fair because we're looking more at the length over its overall difficulty, and I don't think it's long enough to be in the Leaf Cup. So let's let's roll with that. I think that would be a moderately safe. And moving down to another track I think would appease to a lot of big, a lot of fans of the franchise, we have Delfino Square. This one's not one of my personal favorites, but being another track that only appeared once previously, I think it is about time we saw Delfino Square come back as one of DS's more popular pro, uh, picks. This is to make up for the fact that tracks like Waluigi Pinball and Airship Fortress are not being considered for this. So I think the next biggest fan favorite to qualify would definitely be Delfino Square. Um, I think one thing I did forget to mention is that every system will have at least one new track that has not reappeared yet, so including Delfino Square seems like a very fair option. Uh, what we could do for any sort of changes, maybe the gliding, a gliding ramp could be added to the drawbridge that's only active when the drawbridge is raised, so some people might get the opportunity to glide to the, uh, the straightaway to the end, while some people just have to go the long way and maybe try to just boost across the grass. Uh, alternatively, you maybe could even add a gliding ramp at the end of the little uh, building area so that you glide over to the little dock area instead of taking a massive risk and boosting your way across a jump and hopefully making it to the dock without landing in the water. So, I feel like DS Delfino Square has a few interesting options that they could incorporate to make it a little more modernized. Uh, one thing I would love for them to do is definitely increase the visual aspect. Delfino Square, in both of its appearances prior, felt a little bare bones for something that's supposed to be based off of Delfino Plaza. So, I think the best thing is to add more interact, more sociable areas, like maybe some more fruits, more active fruit stalls, maybe make the buildings a little less generic, add more piantas, more toads, and all that jazz. Definitely just <coughs> update the visuals entirely. That's one that I think needs the update in visuals the most. And ending off Banana Cup is Yoshi's Island, probably one of the most popular tour tracks and definitely one of my personal favorites. Down the line, you might see this one clash with another, and even this, I was really iffy on its position in the Banana Cup, but given that it's not terribly long and the hazards aren't too terribly plentiful, I think it can get away with a Banana Finisher, but like maybe with it, maybe with it clashing with a choice down the line, this one might be up for debate, and it might boil down to one or the other. 
And speaking of that other, let's move on to the Leaf Cup where my picks are GBA Yoshi Desert, SNES Mario Circuit 4, Wii U Electrodrome, and N64 Wario Stadium. I came to this conclusion pretty early on into making these ideas, and I think based on its reappearance in Mario Kart Tour, GBA Yoshi Desert would make for a perfect opener for the Leaf Cup. In contrast to some tracks like Athens Dash or Vanilla Lake 1, Yoshi Desert doesn't have, oh, well, I guess the best comparison actually would be a reverse situation to Toad's Factory, where unlike Toad's Factory, it's not relying a lot on its gimmicks or hazards, more so its length. Yoshi Desert, even in Mario Kart Tour, is not exactly a short track. It is compressed in Tour and definitely shorter than it was in Mario Kart Super Circuit, but I think when you scale it up a little bit for a console game, it would still average out to be a moderately long track that I think could fit as a Leaf Cup opener. Uh, we've never had a GBA track open up a standard cup, so now would be an interesting time to do so. Now, onto a probably a more controversial pick, because I literally just finished saying we're all sick of Mario Circuits 1 through 3 from the SNES, and then the Bonehead decided to go, hey, yeah, Mario Circuit 4 would be a great idea. Okay, look, hear me out before you start poking me with pitchforks and lighting my steak on fire with your torches. SNES Mario Circuit 4 hasn't come back yet, and I did say I want to target SNES tracks that haven't come back. And, well, aside from Koopa Beach 1, our only other options were really two SNES Bowser castles. Which I feel like, for Leaf Cup, neither of them really fit. SNES Bowser Castle 2, maybe, but... I don't know. I feel like I am doing the Bowser Castle a little dirty, considering it took how long for SNES Bowser Castle 3 to come back. And that was already a spectacle, so Bowser Castles from the SNES now have a really good template to work off of. Whereas SNES Mario Circuit 4 doesn't. But, I think that's also a reason why it definitely could come back. Because now we might actually be able to do something interesting with it. Because unlike Mario Circuit 3, which didn't get a nice new revamp in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's Booster Course Pass, Mario Circuit 4 has room to improve and grow. It doesn't have to match up to its previous game, uh, iterations. So why not go nuts, add some better trees and lighting in the background, make the mountains a little more three-dimensional, make everything a little more three-dimensional, change the lighting, maybe make it a blue sky instead of a sunrise slash sunset idea. Definitely keep the idea of some flagpoles, maybe do what they did with GBA Mario Circuit in Mar uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe where the starting area is a pit stop. Do something to make it stand out a little bit more than the previous three have in all of their appearances. Which, let's see, averages out to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 whole games. Across three tracks, of course. Alright, moving on, Wii U Electrodrome. I think I can just safely say this is just a pick because I love Electrodrome. It's one of my it's my favorite track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in Mario Kart 8. And I just want to see it come back as soon as possible. It's an amazing track, it's got a unique theme. If we don't need to change anything, why bother? Because it's already an amazing track that doesn't need much changing anyway. And of course, we can't really have a every game get a new rep idea without including the only N64 track to not have reappeared yet. And I think it's way beyond time that N64 Wario Stadium comes back. Considering the entire Mario Kart 64 lineup got summarized in the course of four games, versus others that haven't even seen a reappearance yet, look, it's just time. Coconut Mall, uh, Mushroom Gorge, Mo Waluigi Pinball, they have four reappearances. And those Wii tracks have had four appearances in five games. Wario Stadium hasn't had a single reappearance in six games. Maybe mo probably more. Definitely more. Look, bottom line, this one needs to come back. There's so much they could do. They could maybe do some crazy shit like they did with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe or GBA Bout. Let me, okay, sorry, I'm getting mixed up here. 
this is where my brain is outrunning my mouth. Or my mouth is outrunning my brain. Simple again. They can do some crazy stuff like they did with GBA Mario Circuit, where they could try elevating certain core parts of the track and turning them into anti-gravity. They could do what they did with DS Wario Stadium and throw some areas underwater. They can add gliding ramps easily. There is that one section that intersects with the track where you have to jump over the track without falling. But granted, this is a modern game, so they would definitely have lack to just pick you up if you fell. Either way, N64 Wario Stadium has plenty of potential. Potential I have already seen people tap into when creating custom versions of this track for Mario Kart 8. So I think it's time. There's so much that can be done. Bring it back already. Up next is our Boomerang Cup. Like the Feather Cup, these are tracks that I feel are challenging enough to exceed Leap Cup, but maybe just don't have enough to become Lightning Cup elites. And we are going to be stacking this cup with Tour Piranha Plant Pipeline, Wii U Dragon Driftway, N64 Banshee Boardwalk, and 3DS Maka Woohoo. Much like N64 Wario Stadium, Tour Piranha Plant's Pipeline is the only track to be left out of its game when the entire rest of the game returned. Barring the remix tracks, but those are kind of in their own complicated boat. Tour Piranha Plant Pipeline got almost arguably ripped off from being in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe thanks to Piranha Plant Cove and Piranha Plant Slide both being in the game already. And without Piranha Plant Slide holding it back, this is just the default time to bring back the only tour track that doesn't get to live on in Mario Kart 8. Deluxe, and therefore is the one track that is currently at risk of being left behind when tour servers inevitably shut down. So, clear as day, anti-gravity would play a huge role in this track. I think that's something we all expected it to be if it were to be in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And heck, people have already made custom tracks of this with the most ideal situations possible. I don't think too much else needs to be said. If you've seen those custom tracks, you already know what we could probably expect and what we should probably get. Wii U Dragon Driftway, much like Yoshi Desert, relies less on any sort of hazards and more on its twisty length and challenging layout. Another track that makes fantastic use of its anti-gravity, it mixes in a very twisty track design that I think would be perfect for an intermediate or slightly more advanced track that exceeds the leaf but doesn't quite hit lightning. So, and Dragon Driftway is probably one of my favorite Nitro tracks amongst Mario Kart 8's base DLC. And of course, we have to include all of those evenly, and I just think that without diving into the crossover tracks, Dragon Driftway is just one of the best options to pick from. If not, I probably would pick Wild Woods, but Dragon Driftway just feels like a much more interesting pick. As for N64 Banshee Boardwalk, this one hit me so hard when I realized that I was missing a track between DS and Wii. And the moment I remembered Banshee Boardwalk, I just told myself, please, this has to come back again. I love Banshee Boardwalk. It's one of the biggest sleeper tracks for me in Mario Kart 64, which is really weird to say because I love just about every Mario, 60, Mario Kart 64 track. Uh, in terms of changes, well, I feel like they... Okay, I definitely want to take a lot of inspiration from, again, some custom tracks that I've seen people make. They could try breaking some of the boardwalk into anti-gravity or underwater sections, which I think would be pretty awesome. I think if we really want to get ambitious, one of the most amazing things I've seen out of any custom track for a returning course is a variation of Banshee Boardwalk where the entire bottom U-turn section was replaced by a sunken daisy cruiser. That is not only incredibly dark and fitting for a damaged up ghostly boardwalk, but that is crazy creative. Like, okay, it's one thing to be creating an entire track based on a cruise line, but to destroy that cruise line, sink it halfway, and then start treating half of it like a part of an existing racetrack, that's crazy. And that's the kind of crazy I love. 
If they were to take inspiration from that, I think that would just become the definitive Banshee boardwalk and would be a perfect way to redeem the track after it kind of had to be shafted in Mario Kart DS in a more limited zone. So I just want Banshee Boardwalk. Yes, it does kind of clash with the idea that N64 Wario Stadium is longer and arguably more challenging, but Banshee Boardwalk is just too much of a favorite to me for me to leave out in the dark again, pun intended. And yes, I am once again giving Mario Kart 64 a lot of love when it really doesn't need it after it had everything handed to it in like four games. But let my, let's just pretend my nostalgia bias didn't have any part of that. And moving on to the finale of Boomerang Cup, we have another track that I feel would definitely appease to a lot of fans, 3DS Maka Woohoo. This is definitely not a track that I myself would have loved to pick, but I think it is about time that these two, one of these two tracks made a reappearance. It should be noted that between Tour and Mario Kart 8, every single Mario Kart 7 Nitro course made a reappearance except for the Woohoo tracks. Which makes me think, regardless of what I think of the crossover tracks, this is the one that I think needs to make its first reappearance. It definitely has the length to be a perfect finisher to the Boomerang Cup and a good intro to the Lightning Cup. It's got its fair share of some interesting hazards in the form of the rolling rocks near the top of the mountain and a giant gliding section that would be really fun. Please, for the love of everything fair and balanced, get rid of that glitched shortcut from Mario Kart 7. I, if I have to play another game where Maka Woohoo can be cheesed to hell and back by jumping into a pond and respawning at the top of the mountain, we're gonna have problems. I'm just not gonna enjoy that track. I wanna be able to play that track without the temptation of cheesing it. And I think that might make me like it a lot more. Give it a big revamp. You know Nintendo loves Woohoo Island. If they didn't love it, they wouldn't have made these tracks to begin with. I just think it's time. Let's bring this one back, and I know a lot of people would absolutely love that. And finishing off the Lightning Cup, I have chosen Tour Berlin Byways, GCN Wario Coliseum, Wii's Bowser Castle, and GBA Rainbow Road. Much like Electrodrome, Tour Berlin Byways, it probably just don't, should go without saying that this is one of my favorites. Of course, I wanted to pick Vancouver Velocity, but I don't think Vol Vancouver Velocity is long enough to really warrant a Lightning Cup placement. I don't think it's got enough challenging aspects to it. Um, I don't think I mentioned this, but of course, when I talk about the Tour City tracks, I am talking about their Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and variations where all three routes are merged into one. They would make for very interesting ways to merge them into the basic Mario Kart feel. And Berlin Byways, I think, merges a perfect mixture of good length and good challenge. Uh, the first lap isn't that hard, but it does have the traffic of Berlin Byways 3 getting in the way, which I think is perfect. Berlin Byways 3's route in lap 2 is the perfect way to define this Lightning Cup placement where it has all the traffic and is a much longer lap when compared to the other two. While Berlin Byways one lap on the final lap, or run route on the final lap, has the Womps, as well as you merging right back onto Berlin Byways 3's route with the traffic. So I just think it's a perfect route, or a perfect track to open up the Lightning Cup. Good amount of hazards, a tricky layout, and some hazards to go with it. Moving on is GCN Wario Coliseum. Yes, I know this is going to conflict with N64 Wario Stadium, but let's remember that N64 or uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe had Wario Stadium from DS, Waluigi Stadium from GameCube, and then two other Wario tracks on top of that and another Waluigi track. Screw it. We can have two Wario Coliseum style tracks. And look, the length of this track screams Lightning Cup. It was in the Special Cup for a good reason. It had two laps for a good reason. They could definitely do some anti-gravity stuff with this track as well. I can see them making the entire inward, inner Coliseum bit anti-gravity despite not really twisting and going into certain directions that require it. I think starting from the massive jump into the large cage would be a perfect start. 
and just ending off the wide circular area, the entire inner bit of the Colosseum could definitely make for a perfect anti-gravity zone. And again, the length of this track is perfect and the popularity of this track is perfect. I know a lot of fans would love to see Wario Coliseum come back and to be frankly honest, so would I. And of course, to fit in with ending off a Lightning Cup, I feel like the perfect way to end is to revive the idea of a Bowser Castle and a Rainbow Road. We have not been properly ending off the Lightning Cup with Wii tracks as of late, and while Naka Woohoo probably could have easily fit into this section to fit in with the trend that the previous games have had, with the last course of a Star Cup representing the second to last course of a Lightning Cup, I think it's time to break that tradition and start giving some Bowser's Castles the recognition they deserve. Because Mario Kart Super or Mario Kart Double Dash, DS, and Wii have had their Bowser's Castles left in the dark for quite some time now. And much like GCN, GBA, and DS Rainbow Roads, it's just time to start treating that middle era of Mario Kart with a little bit more respect. So let's end it off with Wii's Bowser's Castle, one of the threatening Bowser's Castles in the franchise, and just my second Wii pick. Both of my Wii picks are tracks that have not come back yet, with Wii's Bowser's Castle just barely missing its chance in Tour in favor of Wii's Rainbow Road. There is absolutely no proof that Wii's Bowser's Castle was intended for Tour. I don't even think it was. I just think Wii's Bowser's Castle would be a perfect track to end off on a Lightning Cup, especially if this is going to be a home console Mario Kart game where we can afford to really vamp up and choose some big tracks. And speaking on traditions, Mario Kart 7 had Mar SNES Rainbow Road, Mario Kart 6 8 had N64 Rainbow Road. It's time to continue that tradition and end this Lightning Cup off on GBA Rainbow Road. The next Rainbow Road in line that didn't skip ahead to Wii and 3DS. Uh, GBA Rainbow Road could definitely benefit from a few gliding sections, especially near the end. Maybe they could even remove most of the floating roads and just replace it with one giant gliding section. I fear that it might get the treatment of most modern tour or GBA renditions where its layout will probably get compressed. But if we really want to keep that GB or that Lightning Cup difficulty, they'd probably be best not touching it too much and leaving its length to um, remain the same. What they could do is maybe they can remove a lot of the ramp railings, especially considering that modern games don't follow that same physics that Mario Kart Super Circuit had. So I feel like the ramp roads wouldn't serve nearly as big of a purpose as they did in Mario Kart Super Circuit. You're not going to be able to cut the huge gaps that you could in Super Circuit in a modern game. So maybe just remove the ramps in general and maybe add a few ramp uh, railings here and there. I definitely hope they ke would keep the long straight, that long thin section as a little bit of a challenging area. Maybe keep the ramps on that so that it makes it dangerous to hit a railing that you risk falling off as you're going at full speed. So I just think GBA Rainbow Road would be a perfect way to end it. They could definitely do some interesting things with it, and I think that would be a fantastic way to end off and give this amazing, beautiful Rainbow Road another shot. Yes, I am going to mention the Paper Mario Bowser's Castle in the background. Please bring that back too! All right, and I think that'll just about cover it for all my ideas in terms of retro tracks. That's basically all I really wanted to go over. It was much longer than I anticipated, but who cares? In any case, that is it for this video. Please let me know what you think of these ideas. Do you think they are realistic? Do you think they're a load of shit? Let me know in the comments, and even more importantly than you guys telling me what you think of my opinion, leave your opinions in the comments below as well. Let me know what tracks you want to see in, the new, in a new Mario Kart game. I would be open to discuss that with all of you guys. I love talking Mario Kart. You know I won't slam anyone's opinions. I believe in a world where opinions are opinions, everyone's entitled to them, there is no right and wrong, there is this thing called respecting other people for what they think. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out.